water in its purest form. Amen. Now, what about I got to be born again of water and of spirit? Water is death. Hello, glory to God. That's what he's talking about. John said, I baptize with water, but there come one after me who's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Yes. So Jesus told him, said, you're going to all of the world, preach this gospel. Yes. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And said might be, shall be what? Because they die. It's appointed unto you to die. You have got to die with him or without him. Either way, you're going to die. Yes. If you die with him, the second death has no power over you. If you die without him, then you have missed the purpose that he came into the human family. And that was to abolish death, remove the veil, so that we could see the truth. Glory to God. The Bible said that death by sin, Romans 5, 12. Tasted of death for every man, Hebrews 2, 9. Having made peace, uh, glory to God, Colossians 1, 20 and 22. Through death, he might destroy the power of death. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Uh, Colossians 2 and 10. Buried with him in baptism unto death. Uh, Romans 6. Baptized into his death, raised up with him to walk in newness of life. 1 Corinthians 15 54, 57. Death is swallowed up in victory. Glory to God. Now I got all that. We can get to the Spirit. Hallelujah. Whenever you're dead, then you're going to be quickened by His Spirit and made alive. Glory to God. Now, we were dead and buried with Him in baptism. That we might be able to rise with him again. Now, Nicodemus, you must be born again. I'm going to bring all this down. How can I be born again? <laughs> now, Nicodemus, a man, ruler of the Jews, John 7, 50, 53. They were conspiring to put Jesus to death. They said, we're going to put him to death. There's a lot of reasons why we can put him to death. We're going to put him to death. And Nicodemus, the same one that came to Jesus by night, said, Does thy law condemn any man? Before he's had a hearing, before we hear what he's saying. Infallible proof. All of the prophets of the hundred and something will viewed prophecies in the Old Testament concerning the birth and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then Nicodemus had in the back of his mind, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's what Jesus told him, signifying what man who is going to die. Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jew, we don't crucify anybody. Why? Because if you crucify him and put him on a cross, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a cross. So we don't crucify him. We can't crucify him. Haven't you read? Haven't you? Does thy law judge any man before it hear him? Search and look. They said, no man came out of Galilee. Veil right out on their face. Uh, they didn't look where he came out of Egypt. Uh, he, he, he came out of Bethlehem. He came uh, out of Israel. Glory to God. He came out of all uh, of these places. He came out of Nazareth. Uh, the Bible shows how that events took place and made him coming from all uh, of these places. But he was born uh, and lay in a manger in Bethlehem. Uh, he was brought back into the city of Jerusalem, the city of David, uh, and he stood there as a lamb, a lamb led to the slaughter, glory to God. And the Bible said in uh, 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 19, John 19 and 16, signifying what manner that he was going to die. How could he possibly be crucified? They didn't, they, they couldn't do it. The priest was in a quandary. I mean, they were really uh, in, in locked between 
to the harm, what, 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 a dilemma. What, what are we going to do? We can't crucify him, but we've got to make him a curse. We can't make him a martyr. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He hung on that tree uh, and became a curse. Why? So he could remove the curse uh, that we had in being part of the human family. Glory to God. One of the greatest uh, 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 infallible proofs uh, is whenever they went before Pilate and they said, uh, but our law won't allow us to crucify him. And old Pilate finally said, I can't find anything wrong with this man. Nevertheless, I'm going to pacify you. And the Roman soldiers, see, they're still arguing this morning in churches all over America <laughs> who crucified Jesus? Who killed Jesus? The Roman soldiers took him and nailed him to the cross. Amen. The Roman soldier is one to put the spear in his side. The Roman soldier were the ones that heard him cry out, Father, it is finished into thy hands. Commend thee my spirit. Glory to God. Now, whenever we run all that together and we find in John 19, 38 and 42, they took him down. They had to take him down before 6 o'clock because they didn't want to be there over Passover. They didn't break his legs like they did the two thieves because the Bible said that he had our Passover lamb and the Passover lamb had to be in perfect tact, couldn't have any bones broken in that lamb. And the Bible said there's no bones broken in his body. And they took him down and the, there were two people that came, uh, one very highly educated and one was the Warren Buffett of the time. Joseph from Armadillo, they begged his body. Yes. Glory to God. Now I want you to look at this just a moment this morning. The, the, the miraculous change that had taken place, the progression in Nicodemus' life from Nicodemus, the third chapter. Nicodemus, you must be born again before you can see. He wasn't talking about seeing the physical, he was talking about seeing the supernatural. When you read in the Bible where at the time people saw angels and people, there are things that we cannot see today because we look through a glass darkly, but then we're going to look face to face. There are angels encamped in this room this morning. There's angels, guardian angels here today. The Bible said that I believe it. Have you ever seen one? I think I have two or three different times in my life, but I'm not sure. I'm not worshiping angels. I'm worshiping the one that said, Thomas, uh, touch and see, amen, yeah. and then write it down so that in 2011 uh, in Wasco, California, Owen Montgomery can sit there and scream and holler, he's not dead, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive forevermore, only a fool uh, will go through a ceremony, a play, uh, and say that there's something greater than the word of God, God help us uh, to know that the word manifests is the eternal God that created the heavens and earth is speaking unto us through the death burial and the resurrection of his son and the greatest thing was that the veil was removed the fear of death was gone and they gathered together in the upper room those that had forsook him those that had denied him were up there because they had now come to the infallible proof and he said, now ye are my witnesses. And they were born again of water and spirit. Water is the grave, the spirit whereby we are buried with him in the death and raised up to walk with him in newness of life. Do you say, do you mean that it literal water? I accept it as literal, glory to God. Amen, I accept it as being a literal grave and being resurrected. Oh. 